This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. It's confusion. It seems like to me there's a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, issues here of, of trying to deceive one for their own means. The fact that Doug is there loading a U-Haul and she's already talked to an attorney saying, uh, I don't want to do this. And so why is Doug there? If this is what you want, why, why is he hanging out? Why, why is this part of the equation at all? And why did mom take the, the daughter somewhere else? Uh, to your point about questioning, and this moment actually takes place where she pulls a gun uh, and, and kills him. Yeah, her that that behavior into itself, just just the gun pull shoot. I mean, that just it so stands out in my mind. I would love to see text between the mom and the daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those. I think I think that's going to be very revealing in this case. When yeah. when when those things get high, I mean, does that happen with every single case we have? Like yes. we have this certain we have this certain viewpoint of things. And then all of a sudden we see the text messages and we're like, oh, well, and, and texts are interesting because it's it's a look in text and Google searches. Those are the two things, mm -hmm. uh, because those those go into the mind. Those are sometimes things that you may not even say out loud. Um, but but it's for some reason we have more of ability to express those things in in writing. Uh, so, yes, those are going to be key pieces in this. I think the digital footprint is going to be very, uh, very fascinating uh, on this case. It, it, it just still leaves you wondering, you know, how and why did all this take place? Let me ask you this, because there was uh, testimony uh, from uh, from Ashley where we, we actually did uh, hear uh, earlier. I remember hearing this audio um, of her talking about uh, an incident where uh, Doug uh, pulled a gun out of the accusation. And the accu this is an accusation. The judge said this. She thinks it's a bunch of bunk and that this never really happened. Uh, but she says that uh, he pulled the gun in initial testimony uh, from his waistband um, and and sh shot uh, around into the, the air. Um, in further testimony, she says, oh, he pulled it from the boot. Now, having a gun pulled on you is a kind of traumatic event, especially if it's something that you don't normally have happen, which I think most of us don't normally have happen. But you remember it. You remember every second of it. Uh, and, and you remember where it came from. Yes, it's a traumatic event, but it's one of those things that doesn't necessarily, I think, get misconstrued of pulling from a boot versus a waistband. I was in a situation once, and I can speak from experience on this. This isn't just my own conjecture. I was in a relationship where that all ended, obviously, but uh, but a gun got pulled on me because they were in a very depressive, suicidal state, um, and it was going back and forth. And I remember every freaking second of that. I'm not going to ever misconstrue that moment and go, oh, maybe she pulled it from her purse, or maybe she pulled Like, no, I can tell you exactly where that came from. What does that say about Ashley's story, the fact that she can mix up something that key um well it to me it shows it's a story yeah you know it's incongruent there's no consistency with the story and the story sounds like a story it sounds like something she read in a book mm -hmm. i mean it really doesn't it i mean yeah. you know the bad guy pulled it from his boot bad guy pulled it from waistband um yeah. i've i've never used that language no I mean, it's just it's just it's not that it's wrong i, I never accuse anyone of lying because mm -hmm. we don't know we don't but know. yeah but it yeah. but it's it's it gives me pause like boy the choice of language and the choice of words are interesting and the inconsistency in the stories where you would remember it extremely well just because when fight or flight hits and time slows down like you so articulately said you remember every single moment because every second seems like a day mm -hmm. because it's that slow moving that's why we lose dexterity that i mean literally you know, kind of going back to what we we're talking about, about the attempt on um, former President Trump's life. And we saw the Secret Service agent having a hard time putting her gun back in her holster because we lose dexterity because for her in that moment, time was moving slow. I mean, we've all experienced this. You know, if you remember being in a dream and you feel like you, you're trying to run, you can't really run and you're so yeah. frustrated. That's what happens when you're pre when, when your frontal cortex get flooded with um with all those fight or flight 
hormones mm -hmm. you just can't move uh, you lose dexterity but also you remember everything you feel frozen in time as you're trying to move and that's why training is the thing that kicks in so your body hits natural reaction so you don't have to think because you're really not thinking in those moments you're just seeing and absorbing and so the fact that she has a an inconsistent recollection of that is interesting well and, and also the fact that a judge has already said that the the quote is i don't believe there's one centilia of truth to your abuse allegations this was when they were going through the custody battle um that's going to be an interesting one to uh to play to a jury i know they were trying to get that excluded uh i don't believe they did um so there, there's a lot that's not working in in, in her favor uh, again i don't I'm basing my opinion here on what exists right now in the evidence uh, from what right. we know. I'm not going to say she's innocent. I'm not going to say she's guilty because I don't know. But if you're to put all of the things on a scale, right now there's a lot of inconsistencies in her story that makes you go, hmm, it's going to be fascinating once all the evidence comes out. That's why we have a court. That's why we have trials to determine all of those sorts of things. But there's not a lot of evidence here on her part other than her claims. How is that going to play to a jury? I really think it's going to come down to texting between her and her mom. If, if, there, if texts exist, I think that's going to be the, I think that's what's going to nail this. That's going to be very fascinating. It's an angle I haven't even thought of, uh, Robin. So I'm really, I'm fascinated to see and uh, wonder what we're going to find out in that digital footprint. Cause that's something. And, and here's why I say of. that, you know, so here's, here's a young woman that when trauma and strife hit her life from, from her perception, what did she do? She ran home. Mm-hmm. And that her mom, and so her mom seems to be a bit involved in her life. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're doing crazy things, and your mom's still involved in your life, the likelihood, yeah. Yeah. and she's not talking anywhere else. She's talking somewhere. We as human beings, we have an we have a need for an outlet somewhere. Um, I got a feeling that outlet's the mom again, just from what the limited things yeah. we see. And I think I think there's going to be some sort of messaging phone call, something between her and her mom that's going to be very revealing in this entire thing. And it doesn't even necessarily mean that it's, you know, mom send their egg and her on like, yeah, go take him out. But more so, what is she saying to her mom? And is mm -hmm. his mom sitting there going, I know my daughter is very impulsive. There might be some sort of disorder or something going on here. I'm constantly trying to calm her down, trying to be that voice of reason. That's going to be very interesting to see uh, what that uh, what, what that conversation looks like. Because I, I think you're right. That's going to be a very revealing part of this, um, far more than the little bit of physical evidence that exists, which looks like a scratch on the side from a box, uh, not yeah. necessarily abuse. And, and I, I think what we might see is, you know, because, again, you have his daughter, which seems to be very close to her dad, mm -hmm. and, you know, to have these great recollect recollections. So I think you're going to see possibly again pure conjecture a, a compare and contrast between healthy interactions and potentially unhealthy interactions between a mom and her daughter mm -hmm. and a father and his daughter yeah and yeah. i think those are what's going to stand opposing to each other and i think that's what the jury is going to see want to listen ad free want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.